In this video, we will provide a brief overview of how to use the Jupyter notebook we have developed to plot periodograms for the Hoyes light curve data. Periodograms allow us to find periodic features in the light curves, such as occultations of the star by material in the disk, or star spots and accretion channels on the surface of the star that rotate around with the star. These features appear as either dips or peaks in the light curve, and they repeat on regular intervals. Jupyter notebooks allow for Python code to be executed in blocks with sliders and drop down lists for interactivity. We've designed this Python notebook that uses AstroPy functions to generate periodograms for the light curves and hosted it on Binder, which is a fully online notebook editor. Uh, with no local Python installation needed. And you don't need any knowledge of Python either to be able to run and interact with this notebook and generate the periodograms for the light curve data. Once navigating to the binder page and wait in a few moments for the repository to load, click on the period viewer notebook file to open up the notebook in a new browser tab and a demonstration of how to use the notebook is up next. So let's see how to use the Jupyter Notebook. Once the binder page has loaded, clicking on the notebook file here will open up the notebook in a new tab in your browser. And all of the Python code is executed on the online server and the notebook is fully editable. Uh, there are three types of block within the notebook. You have markdown or text blocks to display display instructions, such as the headings here, a code block containing the Python code that we want to run, and then output blocks that come after the code blocks. So to actually run the Python code, you select the code block that you want and hit shift and enter on your keyboard, or alternatively, you can hit the run button here, and you'll see that there's a little star next to the block there that indicates that this block is running. So this first block tells the binder server to install the Python modules that we need to run the code. And this needs to be done the first time that you uh, launch the notebook from the binder server. Uh, once that's all done, uh, you'll see that that star changes into a, a number one. So that's now the order that the block was executed in. And we're now ready to start using the notebook. So if we run this next block, uh, you'll see that this one executes a lot quicker and you then have a drop down file underneath. Uh, this allows you to select one of the example light curves that we've selected and I'll show you after how to upload your own data to this binder page if you want to take some data from the server and do the rest of the steps on that file. So we've designed the notebook so that any selections you need to make are done through these widgets and you don't have to edit the Python code within the blocks. So having selected this example file and run the next code block, uh, we see that we're presented with a table which shows all of the data from the CSV file that we've loaded in. So here are the columns that were contained within that CSV file. This next block has some uh, selections for the data itself. So we can select the photometric filter we wish to investigate. And we can also refine the data slightly by selecting the date, uh, calibrated error limit, and a medium filter window. So that's slightly smoothing the data. Uh, so you can leave all of those as the default for now. And if we run the next two blocks, you'll see that we now have a magnitude range slider, a range slider, and we have the light curve for the V-band data plotted here. So it looks like we have one small outlier at the lower magnitude range here. In order to exclude that from the next steps, we can use this slider here. Let's go down to about 17 mags and rerun the block underneath it. And you'll see that that outlier is now filtered out from the data. So if you make a change to any of these sliders, you need to rerun the block underneath it in order to register that change. So this next block actually plots the periodogram. 
And you see in the plot that we have a period on the x-axis and power on the y-axis. And all of these plot windows are actually interactive. So you can zoom in over here to the uh, short period values. And you'll see that the highest power corresponds to a period of around 7.3, 7.4 days. And that's actually a typical rotation period for this type of star. So the code is automatically selecting that best period. And that will be used in this final block, which is uh, plotting the phase folded light curve. So it's sometimes just called a folded light curve. So it replots the magnitude values uh, using the period obtained from the periodogram. So between zero and one in phase is that entire period of 7.3 days. And we can then use the slider values above to fit a sign function, which is the red curve that you see here, to that data. So as you change these sliders, the plot is automatically updated. And you can see that uh, we just need to make a few changes to get the, the curve well fitted to the data. So you can see with a, a few clicks, we've ended up with a, a well-fitted sign function to the data. So this allows us to both visualize and quantify the periodic feature that we've seen in this light curve data. If we want to go back and make changes in the notebook, uh, we can do that by rerunning any of the blocks or changing any of the slider values. So for example, if we wanted to pick the IBAN data, we can select that here. And then if we rerun the blocks underneath, you'll see that the light curve has changed and we now have the I-band photometric data and we can rerun the next steps and investigate different periods and different filters of the data. So we haven't explained much of the actual Python that goes into producing these plots and investigating the data. We wanted to keep this more brief onto how to actually use the data and hope that you have a look at it yourself and, and try different selections and find some interesting features in the data. Um, if you'd like a deeper explanation on how the Python works, uh, please feel free to let us know and it could be arranged. And we also plan on making some more Python notebooks available for different kinds of exploration of the Hoyes data. So if you have any, any suggestions for that, please also let us know. So you saw in the demonstration that we've provided five light curve files for you to have a look at in the example notebook. If you want to upload your own light curve file that you've downloaded from the Hoy server, in order to do that, go to the main binder page from where you launched the notebook and instead click on this light curve CSV files folder and that will load up the light curves that are currently installed and it will allow you to upload a new CSV file which will be fully compatible with any downloaded from the Hoy server. So this might be data you've taken yourself, uh, a particularly interesting object that you're curious about, or data that you've obtained from the LCO collaboration. Once clicking upload, it will open up a file browser on your computer where you just need to select the light curve that you want to upload, and then open up the notebook again and rerun that code block that has the drop down list for the light curves. And the file that you uploaded should then be available to use for the rest of the notebook. If you have any questions, uh, comments, or suggestions for using that notebook, please get in touch. And in future videos, we'll be further explaining how we interpret that light curve and the folded light curves. And we also have some science explained videos coming up where we'll talk about young stellar objects and their variability. Thank you for watching.